So I was just watching like a little CBS, I think, documentary about um, a guy that followed the, an evangelical kind of movement uh, for seven days and was, as he described it, embedded um, in the army of God. Um, and one of the things that came out of the video was, and that, that kind of struck me, was the part where he was in... Um, uh, he was talking to and part of like this kind of thing with lots of Christians and he felt very kind of touched and very emotional about it and he felt like something very powerful had happened to him and uh, there was a, a show on TV here in Australia John Saffron versus God it was called um, and it was this John Saffron guy who went and did various religious experiences and one of them was um, he actually had an exorcism um, and if you watch the episode, it's very intense. And he actually later on said, um, basically, what he's doing on that while he was being filmed was real. Like he wasn't, he was really like feeling very strong emotions, and he wasn't just acting for the camera. Now it's impossible, obviously, to verify that. Um, and John Saffron, the guy in that show, I'm pretty sure he's an atheist himself. Um, and so you may say, well, maybe he just did it for the cameras. But he himself says he didn't. And I actually believe him. Um, uh, and I I mean, I'm not surprised by these things. Obviously, people, when you see someone who is a not a professed believer or not a strong believer, and they go into the, such a situation and they're very affected or it happens to you yourself, obviously the kind of instinctive, the, the kind of leap of logic is to say, well, I must be having this amazing experience. God must be touching me. Something amazing must be going on. Um, but th there are all of these psychological uh, things that can happen to you. Um, and one of them that's quite, quite powerful, obviously, happens in groups. So when big groups get together amazing things can happen to the human mind i mean people in groups act very differently and they don't only act differently they can actually perceive things and group hallucinate and kind of fabricate these alternate realities that don't exist um and all on the basis of just the human psyche is so much in tune with other people um and it's such an evolutionary part of our nature that we, we can actually lose touch with reality in such a situation completely. And I think the kind of instances of people actually getting very seriously ill from these kind of mass phenomena, these illnesses which are presumed to actually be uh, kind of psychological mental illnesses, but which were infectious and which actually may have killed people. Um, and there are various instances of this, you can check it out, including one where people in Singapore, men were afraid their penises were, <laughs> were shrinking into their bodies, which was a rather funny one, but other ones weren't as funny. Um, uh, so all of this just on the basis of human psychology and this kind of effect of, of, of a big, lots of people kind of, uh, having the same emotions or the same thoughts um, whether it's in the same space or whether it's just something that's very that permeates through media or something like that um, and so I mean I personally like I mean the thing is I've experienced I haven't experienced it to that extent I haven't gone anywhere and been like whoa you know blown away like uh, John Saffron was when he was having his exorcism apparently I haven't had that personal experience myself uh, but certainly I've had the experience of this feeling of oneness, this kind of expansive feeling, um, this great warmth and this just, just this connectedness um, as part of crowds um, and also as, as part of, um, of religious crowds, um, but also as part of other crowds. And, you know, if you've been in a big protest you might have gotten a similar kind of feeling uh when things are going very well or you know in lots of other situations as well um and so i mean my 
my interpretation of this, and this isn't to take anything away from anyone religious, maybe maybe that isn't the same experience um, that people get when they share communion in a church, I don't know. Or maybe that experience is available, you know, to me as well, because I'm also one of God's creatures. Um, but whatever the exact case may be, um, I think these kind of things are some of the things that we neglect at our peril and I think as part of the rationalist worldview too often we actually disregard an important part of academia and that's kind of psychology um, and um, sociology and we don't look we we seem to think we can just understand everything in terms of maths and you know biology and chemistry and those good basic things um, but we really overlook the fact that those other things are hugely important and that, you know, unless your maths and chemistry and physics are really, really good uh, to the level that no ones are, you can't really understand human society through the basics, so to speak. You need these kind of abstracted um, ideas that come from psychology. And there, there are so many things which we kind of understand or at least have clues about and that are at play in religions that are to some extent very much downplayed in secular society um, and especially in uh, kind of atheist circles. And I think we should look at a lot of those things again because of a, lo a lot of those experiences can be very positive. Um, they have probably this big evolutionary role um, and so and they also I think evolutionarily they have this bonding role for social groups um, and by not doing those things we suffer from a lack of cohesion and from a lack of connectedness which may be quite detrimental and obviously there is a problem because there will always be a gap uh, whilst we can have those experiences even as atheists, um, in a community, we can't really have that experience with 50 million or 100 million people or how any, however many people are in our country. Um, so obviously there will still be this gap um, which will be problematic where we can't share that kind of community with everyone on the same level that people used to be able to do with everyone that was really uh, relevant to them. Um, but still, I think it's an important uh, thing. First of all, because building any kind of community is good. And second of all, because I do have this feeling that by not doing it, there is this part of the human psyche which, which tends to not get used. And therefore, there seems to be that then people, I, I mean, I myself have this experience. There is that kind of gap that, that lack of something, that, that wanting to be part of something bigger. And I think that's possibly where that would play a big role. Um, and from experiences where I have been part of something like that, that has very much satisfied that for some period of time. But it seems to be kind of hard to have that as a regular experience because it only seems to come about... Um, as kind of a side effect of something else happening. It doesn't seem to be something which in secular circles is accepted as an experience which we should organize in its own right. And I think it may be one of several experiences which have just been relegated to the kind of religious or old-fashioned, um, which maybe shouldn't have been because they may still have a lot of value in the human context.